speaker a talk uh, is about uh, similar stuff. It's uh, Martin Blatt talking about math and data science. Uh, that's great. Thanks, Mr. Uh, I'd like to continue um, where the IMO proofs, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, kind of lack, which is um, um, a way of giving um, our AITP the ability to learn the method that needs to be used, rather than just throwing a whole lot of examples, you know, a million formally uh, defined proofs. Wouldn't it be great if it could just see the example of how we apply a particular mathematical um, method and then uh, learn to use it? So um, I'm um, uh, a data scientist. I do uh, research in machine learning in my free time. I'm not currently affiliated with any institution. And I'm really excited about the possibility that maybe during my lifetime, it would be possible to have AI that automates science. And in order to make that possible, we need to be able to um, learn to use advanced mathematical techniques like, like Green's theorem, or induction, or uh, you know, hundreds of others. Um, and it seems that there is already a lot of data to make that possible in the textbooks. So I would like you to just entertain a hypothesis for the duration of my talk, which is that true human-level theorem-proving AI will be achieved by training models in the same way we train humans, on the same materials that humans are learning from, like textbooks. In fact, uh, MLMs are already learning from textbooks in a, in a very um, um, simple kind of way. Uh, from research papers, I don't think even LLMs are reading those, but maybe they could. Um, and reinforcement learning, of course, um, and um, may I um, delve into, the, into that already? Um, so, because we know reinforcement learning is already giving state-of-the-art results in the field of proof. Um, so, so, my motivation is kind of bridging two different approaches. On one hand, we have machine-readable theorem proving where we're building a huge body of proofs in Lean or Coq or Isabel, um, and then we can train more and more complex models to do that kind of very formalized reasoning. And on the other hand, we have math work problems like the uh, Math Olympic, uh, Olympiad, um, and where we're training LLMs and, and other uh, and very general models um, with uh, RLHF to give us um, proofs. Um, and I, I think it's important to try and think how we're going to bridge those two together. Um, and it could be through a method that extracts the formal proofs out of any um, um, text-based uh, problem. So, so the methodology in creating the data set uh, was actually very simple. Um, you can have a look at the, the paper. But, um, I selected a dozen uh, textbooks in the field um, at the library. Um, I used uh, the best available tool for converting those into LaTeX. Um, and um, uh, then a lot of manual um, data processing was done to convert those into individual lessons, individual chapters, individual problem blocks. Um, LLM was used to split out the uh, problem section into the question and work answer. And then after aggregating the data, uh, I was able to uh, test this baseline with just uh, uh, GPT-4 to predict uh, proofs and use another uh, GPT to test whether these proofs, whether these uh, answers were correct. Um, to create a benchmark. So the data set looks like this. Uh, it's available on GitHub. Um, you have a uh, LaTeX code for every lesson. Uh, there are 57 lessons out of four books in uh, first level uh, undergraduate mathematics, uh, like, like calculus, like linear algebra. Um, and uh, you can then have uh, the LaTeX for each of uh, 3,091 3, problems, along with the solution, 
And sometimes those problems have like A, B, C, D parts or, or, or uh, prove this and then that. Uh, so there are actually uh, over 5,000 individual exercises here. Um, so it's um, not necessarily big enough to train a model from scratch, but it's certainly a good data set for a fine tuning model or evaluating. Um, so the data set uh, ended up being just four out of the 12 uh, textbooks. They are like super thick, uh, 500 page uh, textbooks that uh, give a really good introduction to the, um, to the methods used. Um, and uh, I think this is the first data set that contains the lessons uh, on the techniques that we use in mathematics. It's the first one with work solutions for university level problems at scale. Um, and um, what might be interesting, there are a lot of figures in the um, lessons as well as in the uh, problems and solutions. So uh, there's an opportunity for models that take advantage of uh, the visuals. Um, of course, I don't know any of these books, uh, so please don't sue me. So, so the books are uh, the CC by and see they there, and so, so uh, openly you, you can. Um, you, you I found them at the library. So, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, please uh, uh, don't sue me. It's just for purposes only. It should be very easy to use. So if you just go to uh, the, the link, uh, you can load any of the 3,021 problems like this, and then you can get the lesson like this. These are just uh, latex strings that you can feed into the process. Um, so the framework is uh, using MathPix for the conversion. Um, for, I think, $40, you can convert like 10 textbooks. So uh, it's a good tool I recommend it. Um, then a custom preprocessor for splitting those up, uh, and then uh, separating out uh, the exercise into the problem and solution, uh, was one with GPT-4. Um, if you have uh, time, or, or uh, maybe you have a, a classroom full of students that have time, uh, I can recommend uh, having them look at the uh, uh, data, because there are other textbooks that have already been done, processed for this, where you have to pay $40, and so somebody needs to do this work, uh, instead of having four books, it could very easily be 40 books, um, so that it's more valuable. Um, and after extracting this, I ran the baseline, which is using GPT-4 for uh, trying to solve the problem, and then giving side by side the correct answer and the proposed answer to a simpler model. Um, the idea here is that when we are developing newer, better models, we don't want to rely on the best, most complex model for grading, um, because that would create like a circularity issue. Um, and instead, um, I use this simpler one um, to um, prove the concept that it's not necessary, uh, and manually um, reviewing 100 proposed answers and the grades that GPT-3 gave, I found that it was always agreeing with what I was saying. So um, I trust this simpler model to do the grading when it's done this way. Um, it was uh, evaluated in two different ways. First, without showing the lesson, which gives 61% uh, accuracy on these particular 5,200 problems. And when showing the lesson, it's 12% uh, better. So, so to be clear, the, the difference between without lesson and with lesson is that with lesson, it appears in the context of, of uh, the LM, right? Exactly. Yes. So this is just GPT-4 uh, without retraining, without okay. fine-tuning, and uh, it has the same prompt. You are a very clever mathematical solver. And then the um, user prompt either contains the whole lesson which is always like 20,000 characters or less, and then the problem, or it doesn't have, or doesn't contain the lesson. Um, and it turns out that the lesson helps. So clearly, um, there's a benefit of uh, having these uh, kinds of 
lessons, and uh, I recommend this kind of approach for uh, future work. So in conclusion, um, the, the big picture is we have a lot of mathematical program which, which I think contains all of the kind of stuff we want our AIs to be able to use. Um, here I create the data set. In the future work, I'd like to create a model that makes use of this data set so that it can uh, use the techniques that we have sitting around in so many valuable textbooks. Um, so even if you don't agree with the hypothesis, um, this is the direction I think makes sense to explore. Um, and the contribution here is uh, the data set and some of the code that I described, as well as this benchmark, which I encourage everybody to try to do. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah, so if I understand correctly, then these proofs were found by vanilla GPT-4 no fine-tuning. That's yes. right. And did you think about fine-tuning GPT-4 with this data set also, or with some of it, to see if that would improve its performance? Yeah, of course. I'd love to. Okay. Um, I think it will make sense. And if you just imagine it here, right, it's going to have two more rows. Presumably, they'll be a bit higher. I don't know how much. Yeah. I'd like to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there are mistakes in virtually every textbook. Like, you know, there are <laughs> examples of thousand page textbooks with hundred pages of data. And I, I, I was just wondering, uh, I mean, you would think that any AI tool will exploit any contradiction to do anything eventually. And so, how do you prevent something like that from happening? I know that it's probably not happening in your tools, but in general. Um, so, the way I think about this is that the textbooks that were chosen are like in their fifth edition. So hopefully somebody else who understands it better has already done the hard work of uh, picking out the errors. Um, but yeah, for sure. And in fact, any data set will contain errors. Uh, so it's a matter of regularization of the training rather than hoping that the data set is flawless. Um, maybe there's, there's room for a combination with a really well um, combed data set like uh, the Olympiad one, which for sure is correct. Um, but I think if we want to scale, uh, we will have to be forced to use data that contains some errors. Yeah, um, I was wondering, uh, you know, um, if you take something that, uh, you know, like the, uh, the uh, hot book, you know, the homotopy theory book, it's already available in the source LaTeX, right? So you don't have to, and of course it is free for research and everything. Uh, so uh, I was wondering, uh, that I think is more characteristic of, of how mathematicians communicate uh, ideas to one another uh, um, than the textbooks, which are really just for, 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 for teaching and learning. But the, this is, of course, the goal of the authors is for you to learn uh, hot from it. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it is taking a somewhat uh, different approach. How hard would it be? And I don't think hot has a whole lot of problems. I mean, the people even for high-level research monographs have realized that this is excellent to put in problems, but problems are few and far between, generally, in these things. I was wondering if you could sort of uh, put something like that through, through and turn the crank on, 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 on GPT-4 and see how far it goes with those kind of problems. That, that's sort of a more ambitious undertaking than, you know, subjective problem. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I was thinking about the same, and I hit two problems. First, I think uh, textbooks like this are advanced, so really there's already a gap between um, the, the kind of uh, uh, complexity of mathematics that we are feeding into um, AI and the mathematics that mathematicians will really use. So I'm trying to find the, the lowest level that will make sense. If, if I uh, took uh, the, uh, the textbooks uh, for graduate mathematics, maybe the accuracy would be 0%, 0 0.5, and there's no benefit from that because it's just too wide a gap. Um, and uh, second, uh, I was just trying to have as high a number of exercises because I like to learn by exercises. And uh, sure enough, uh, out of those 12 textbooks that I chose, they were not all exercise textbooks. They were genuine um, um, 
thank you for the review exercises are like 10% of the pages. So I think um, once this becomes, once this is considered solved, then it will be natural to move to um, um, what you described. So I, uh, I, I was doing one similar experiment half a year ago, and one of the Spanish language was also GPD, but West Elk. Uh, and here you take the 200 pages of good Sada textbook at media at the center. So I, I, I know how it would happen to them because it was set up in the form. So I guess my question is how do you know that GPT 4 isn't already trained on all, all these textbooks that they hired? Yeah, of course. Um, actually, I don't know. In fact, I don't think anybody knows what exactly it's trained on. But I kind of like the idea that it's not available in the training corpus because it's not available in LATEC anywhere on the internet. But they, they could have used the same tool. But if they used the same tool, they could have made it part of the training. I don't know. But uh, that would be a problem because it would mean that there is no way of teaching it a new method that wasn't already seen. So uh, I think the natural way of addressing this is to use the fine tuning that's, that somebody mentioned here and evaluate how much it changes things. If the fine tuning doesn't help, then it's in the training. Like that, and we didn't know. Oh, yeah. Um, so when you when you include the lessons, the lessons contain examples, problems, and solutions. That's right. And I, I have a follow-up question to this one. Oh, okay. Uh, like one, once you put this data set on GitHub. And increases uh, chances of ChatGPT uh, being trained on this thing. So, what do you think about like, uh, uh, translation of the data? <laughs> uh, sure. You say maybe I could make it like an encrypted zip file. Uh, so, um, the natural way is if people enjoy using this then the pipeline makes it really easy to extract the same kind of data from more textbooks and there could be like a broad out data set that just isn't online. Um, but in fact, I don't really mind it being used by ChatGPT because I think their next token prediction method is fundamentally uh, limited in what it can achieve. And it's only with folks like um, uh, uh, like DeepMind that are applying reinforcement learning that will be able to see real big improvements in um, theorem proving by AI. So, uh, in fact, I would encourage them to use it. Uh, if it moves from 60% to 80, that'd be great. Um, So my personal goal in doing this is that we create um, AI capable of applying the known mathematical methods to new problems. And if this is achieved in, in, this, in this way that the data set is online and that somebody trades on it and I don't know, then that's still achieving the, the goal. Um, and then uh, the problem will be expanding this out so that it's as complete as possible. Um, but uh, yeah. I think you're interested in the um, compact uh, creation of a framework that takes the lesson and converts it into a model that it's able to apply. Um, but frankly, I don't really mind how they go or where this sits. We, we should wrap it up, so thanks.